Babylon was the most powerful kingdom in the world. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon, and he was arrogant and prideful because of his kingdom. God gave him a dream that troubled Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel interpreted the dream and told the king that it was a warning to humble himself or to be humbled by God. Nebuchadnezzar didn't listen to the notice. He was on his palace roof a year later, boasting in his glory. He said, is not this Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? While the words were still in the king's mouth, God told him from heaven that he would be humbled. Immediately, Nebuchadnezzar was driven out from his palace. His body began to change. His skin became clammy and wet. His hair grew like eagle's feathers. His fingers and toenails grew like bird's claws. He went out to the field and began to eat grass like an ox. After seven years, God gave him his right mind and kingdom again. Nebuchadnezzar was humbled. He gave God the glory and praised him as the Lord of all. Nebuchadnezzar thought he was the greatest in the world. He even thought this after witnessing God's mighty power in saving Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace. God also warned the king that his pride would ruin him through a dream. Daniel told the king that either he humble himself or God would humble him. Unfortunately, like so many, Nebuchadnezzar refused to humble himself. In Proverbs 8, 13, it tells us that God hates pride. James 4, 6 says that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Why does God hate pride so much? The trouble with pride is that it is entirely contrary to God's desire and divine plan for humanity. Pride teaches us that we are good enough, sufficient, and should be lifted high and praised. Of course, these terms are not what pride advertises. Pride is far too subtle a sin to make that mistake. Pride is a subtle yet deadly pill that many well-meaning Christians have swallowed, even without realizing. Pride is the launch pad for the rest of our sinfulness. Rebellious pride, which refuses to depend on God and be subject to Him, but attributes to self the honor due to Him, is the very root and essence of sin. Pride drives us to think that we are the greatest, but there's only one great one, and that is Jesus Christ. He is the name above every other name. Which brings us to the first point, pride deceives. Have you ever heard someone insist that they should be a professional singer, but they couldn't hold a note in a bucket? Popular TV shows have shown these people that their self-deception is so bad that it's funny. What would cause someone to think that they're something when they're not? The answer is pride. Pride causes us to think wrongly about ourselves. The biblical definition and attitude towards pride is opposite to how our culture views it. To the world, pride is an admirable trait, even celebrated. Our culture teaches self-esteem as one of the highest virtues from an early age. We teach that the world revolves around us and our happiness. Sadly, because of being perpetually told that we're awesome, we believe it. Humility correctly understands who we are. We are not awesome, only God is. Our second point is pride devours. In Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, the prophet describes the fall of an angel named Lucifer. This talented, beautiful, and anointed angel seemingly had everything going for him. But he wasn't satisfied with simply being a special angel. He wanted to be higher than God himself. Pride consumed his mind and his heart. He would rebel against God and lead a third of the heavenly hosts with him. Do you know who Lucifer became? Satan. Like a disease, pride can devour our souls. We must identify when pride is taking hold in our hearts. We know pride is infecting our hearts when we insist that we must be number one. When we are competitive with other people about silly things. When we view other people lower than ourselves. These are symptoms that tell us pride has infected our hearts. The cure for pride is just like any other sin. We must repent. Repentance is humbling because it requires us to admit that we're wrong and not good enough. That's why James continues to say in James 4, 6 that God gives grace to the humble. Lastly, pride destroys. Dr. Seuss wrote a funny story about a turtle named Yertle. He got wrapped up in thinking how awesome he was and how much better he was than the other turtles. 
Yertle insisted on being the highest turtle, literally. He stacked other turtles into a tower and insisted on being on top. Eventually, Yertle, the foolish turtle, fell. Proverbs 16, 18 through 19 tells us that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It is better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to divide the spoil with the proud. In these verses, we see that pride the exaltation of oneself will not go unchecked. The proud will fall. It is not a question of if, but a question of when. As Christians, we must be extremely cautious about how we view ourselves. Do we crave exaltation? Do we long to be thought of as better than others? Is our self-image what rules our hearts? Are we like Nebuchadnezzar or Yertle the Turtle, stacking others up so we can look good? If so, like the foolish king and turtle, we are bound to fall.